All right, y'all, that's the third time I've listened to that song this morning and I'm emotional now. So anyway, that was motivational songs that I was sharing. Um, Rose was here for the, I feel good. Maybe I should stick that back on for a second. <laughs> but um, we're gonna talk about music in a little bit. I'm gonna move some things around. Let me stop my share. So I can get on here with you ladies that I'm so excited to see this morning. Let's see here. I'm gonna adjust a few things as we get started. I should have maybe brought some tissues in here with me. I did not get emotional the first two times I heard it this morning. All right, let's see. Okay. Oh, y'all disappeared on me. There you are. <laughs> All right, so good morning. Who's ready for day two of Fill My Cup? Today is a cup of motivation, okay? Um, questions, did anybody choose not to have white sugar yesterday? If you chose not to have white sugar yesterday, raise your hand, okay? Mom says she did, okay? May I ask how you did, mom? You can unmute yourself. Uh, yeah, I did. I, guess, I think I did good. Yeah, I, I'm doing the keto, so that's definitely no white, white sugar. So I did use a little bit of stevia in my tea and coffee. Okay. So what kept you motivated to say no thank you to sugar yesterday? Well, um, I really, really, really need to lose some weight. I know that that's going to be one of the main ways to do that is cutting back the sugars and sweets. Okay, so your motivation was to lose weight. Did you kind of have to keep that on your mind through the day as maybe something came up that you would think about sugar? No, not really, since Jackie and I kind of started last week, so I'm kind of getting into it, but I did because I stayed up late, so that's my hard time is late at night. So, um, so I had to have the talk. No, no. <laughs> All right. But well, it wasn't as hard as it used to be. So I'm thinking because for the last week, I really, well, I hadn't put white sugar in anything or made anything, but there were, you know, a few things that have sugar in them. Even your milk, which I was, the half and half that I bought that I thought I was doing good has some in it, so. All right. Right. Well, there's lots of different kinds of sugars. We're not going to get into that today. You know, we've got our natural sugars, we've got fructose, glucose, all the different things. But um, one of the things that make white sugar really addictive compared to the natural sugars is that it's processed, right? So, you know, just keeping that in mind this week, everybody's going to have to make decisions for themselves of what that's going to look like. Mom's doing keto. I'm staying away from white flour, white sugar. Um, I have received a message last night is, is alcohol a no, uh, you know, a no, no on, on that alcohol is a sugar also. So, you know, just um, keeping in mind that you're going to have to make decisions that are going to work for you on whatever you do. But today we're going to talk about a cup of motivation. Okay. And let me just say, God has given me so much to share with you all. So I'm going to do my best to share what he has given me to share with you today. I would like you to grab your worksheets or a piece of paper because you may want to take some notes. I might even try to type some things on the screen while you're watching it. If it doesn't work, it's no big deal. You're just going to have to listen to me, but um, it may work. We're going to see. I was practicing earlier. 
So I'm going to see if I can go ahead and share my screen with you all because I have the works. Oh, it just popped up in meeting. I hope I didn't end no meeting. Um, Y'all are still there, right? <laughs> okay. So yes, now you should be able to see on the screen two pictures that were worksheets. Like I said, if you've got the worksheets printed off, great. And if you don't, just have paper and, and it's here for you to look at and you can write any notes that you want. All right. So um, we're going to just go ahead and start with what motivation is. Okay. And uh, motivation um, is defined as a force or what causes you to act. Okay. So over here on the belief circle on the right, I have in the action part of the puzzle, okay, um, a line that goes in from belief and a line or an arrow that goes, that says motivation, okay? I want you to think about that motivation is a force that forces you to act, okay? Make sense? So if you um, look at on the left, the cup of motivation, I have the word extrinsic on the very top, okay? And inside of it, right above that grief and happy, I have the words intrinsic, all right? These are two types of motivational forces. So when you look back over on the right, that motivation that I have the arrow from the outside, that's extrinsic, that's from the outside of us. When I have it going from the inside, from the belief to the action, that is intrinsic. And we're going to talk about both of those right now. Okay. Um, so number one is extrinsic motivation. And we're going to see if I can type this in, in case anybody's curious how to spell that. So let's see if I can do this. Extrinsic. This is external motivation. Okay, that's the first one. This is when you're motivated from a force outside of you. It can be something, it can be someone. So let's use the example something, a fire. Who, if they see a fire, is motivated to run out of the house or run out of wherever, right? That <laughs> fire is an extrinsic motivation or a motivator, all right? Um, somebody could be someone has a gun and you are motivated to leave, right? That is extrinsic motivator. And um, this is an external drive. It can also be compensation for something you do, okay? Um, you might be motivated to get up to go to work to get a salary, right? You might be motivated to get a bonus. Um, if you do this, you get this bonus. Um, money is a very big motivator for a lot of people. Um, food can be a motivator. Uh, my oldest son, I would say if you want to motivate him to do anything, food is his motivator. More than money, probably. And money is a big motivator. He's an accountant. Sweets can be a motivator, okay? It can also be in the form of punishment, all right? Um, I'm not going to do that because I will get a fine. So, you know, um, a motivator to not speed is I don't have enough money to pay the ticket, all right? Um, blame can be a motivator. I don't want to be blamed for something, so I'm not going to do it. Or it can be a motivator in um, I don't want anybody to find out, right? Judgment. Sometimes we choose not to do something. It can be a motivator because we don't want to be judged. Okay. Those are extrinsic, extrinsic motivations. Okay. And then we have what is called intrinsic. This is from the inside. All right. And um, this is when you're motivated from a force inside of you. This is often personal gratification. It is something that makes you feel good about doing it or um, it feels good when you do it. You know what I'm saying? Like it feels good. 
this can also be both positive or negative on either of these. So you're going to see that I have intrinsic. It's a kind of on both sides of that cup of motivation, the left side being more of what we consider negative, the right side more of what we consider positive. It's the same for extrinsic. All right. So let's um, start with extrinsic motivation. Who here yesterday commented on the Facebook post of what was your biggest takeaway? Who posted on there? Let's see, um, I'm going to ask Jessica, do you mind um, answering a question? Can you answer? Yeah, uh, my church is doing a fast and I have been contemplating what to fast. Didn't really feel like anything was called to mind. I didn't feel like God was really telling me anything. And then Sunday before church, you sent the sugar detox list and then it just kept on getting brought up. And then yesterday morning, you started with the Bible study of what won't you give up? for a connection with God. And so that was kind of my biggest slap in the face. Yeah. So thank you so much for sharing that because I think that can help a lot of other people. Um, my question for you is why did you comment on the post? What made you go over to that post and comment? Uh, you asked us to. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so me asking that can be an extrinsic motivator, right? Um, I also said that if anybody puts a comment on that post, your name will go into a drawing, right? Um, for the smart scale. Okay, that is an extrinsic motivator. I was I was already working on motivation yesterday, y'all, <laughs> on the cup. Okay. Can I be honest? I decided to do that and I did not have any idea that I was even like, that wasn't the plan at the moment. And then last night as I'm working on this, I was like, the Lord said, and you gave them an extrinsic motivator, Shauna. So um, a lot of times we need an extrinsic motivator to get us out of our comfort zone or to do something that's different than what we normally do. Y'all habits are habits for a reason because they're easy. They're something we do over and over and over again and we don't have to think about it. We have to have something to disrupt that for us to change, okay? And extrinsic motivators can be that. There are three different ones, three different motivators we're gonna talk about today inside of that. So the first one, all right, is called a reward based motivator. All right, and yesterday I gave you all a reward based motivator. Let's see if I can get this to move. I'm trying to make this bigger, but I don't know if it'll let me. All right, so on a reward-based motivation, you can see that on the left side and the right side of our cup, okay? Yesterday's reward-based motivation, okay, I'm gonna say is on the right side because I would say it has a positive outcome. Someone's going to win a skill, okay? You also took a step of faith. You'll see faith up at the top there. There says fear and faith. You took a step of faith, all right, um, that by doing this action, right, this is a motivator that gets us to act, you could win a scale, all right? So all of you that went over to um, the post and made a comment you went through the whole thought, emotion, feelings, action, and result without maybe even thinking about it. But we're going to talk about the action part. Something motivated you and you took action. Okay. Either you were motivated because I asked you to and you were just motivated. My youngest is motivated by just asking him to do something. He pretty much is the yes man. If you ask him to do something, he pretty much does it. My other kids, maybe not so much motivated by yes mom. Okay. So um, 
I want you to think about that for just a moment. Think about whether or not having that extrinsic reward based um, motivation motivated you, okay? And since this week we're talking about detoxing sugar, we're gonna kind of discuss how often we have received a sweet reward to motivate us to do something, okay? Again, this could be extrinsic. Someone saying, if you do this, you're gonna get this sweet reward, okay? Has anybody done that before? Have you done it to others and have you done it to yourself, right? And um, we in American society, we often use a sweet treat as a reward for doing well or accomplish something, okay? Not only can that become a habit, it also becomes ingrained as part of how we feel, right? I accomplished something, yay, I feel good. I ate something sweet, that feels good. We connect the two, okay? If we wanna feel good about even not doing something good, sometimes we take the sweet treat, so we'll have that same feeling of accomplishment, all right? Now, um, this could be intrinsic, you saying to yourself, if I do this, I'm gonna treat myself to a sweet reward. Like I said, when my birthday came about, y'all, and I was looking at my birthday to Christmas and that we're going on vacation and I'm going, I was like putting my hands up saying, I deserve all the sweets that I want, right? Like that was the intrinsic motivation that was going on. I deserve it. Shared that yesterday. The thing about sweet rewards is it's instant gratification. Pretty much the moment you take the bite, right? It feels good. Okay, and this trains us to be sweet reward based motivated. Okay, everybody here may not be that. We're going to talk about other kinds of motivation, right? I am a sweet reward based motivated person. Just going to say it, okay? In this case, the reward is not working in my favor, okay? You may be easily motivated for something sweet because you know it's going to make you feel better in the short term. I could change that to anything, y'all. I don't have to just use sweets because I'm going to say I have replaced sweets with other things. Those that know me well know how much I love nuts. I just replaced sweets with something else. It was my motivator. Okay. What we're talking about today is motivation. I want you to think about what kind of things motivate you. Okay. Yesterday I shared um, that my pastor's opening words on Sunday morning was nobody plans on becoming overweight. It's not a plan, right? Yet many of us are motivated. I want you to look over on the right. Motivation affects our actions. Okay. We are motivated by actions that cause us to become overweight. We often say we need to be more motivated but y'all, some of us are really motivated already. We are taking some actions on a daily basis, right? We need to make sure that the motivation is working in our favor towards the results we want. Okay, is this helping anyone? Okay. The next type of motivation is called power-based motivation. Let me write this real quick. Power-based motivation. Okay, so um, there is two types of power-based motivation, just like um, the reward. It can be extrinsic or it can be intrinsic, okay? Um, it can also be used in a positive way and a negative way. So I've got power, um, up there on both sides. Parents, bosses, the government all use their power to motivate us to do what they want us to do or what they don't want us to do. Okay. So it's a lot of times if you do this, you get this. Or if you don't do this, you won't get this. Ask yourself if you are more likely to be motivated by the positive or the negative, okay? 
Are you more likely to be motivated by if you do this, you're going to get this? Or are you like, yeah, I don't care about that. But if you say, if you don't do this, then you're not going to get this. Okay. Is that more of a motivator? Think about it a little bit and, and write it down. Okay. There is also intrinsic power based motivation. And this is something that actually motivates me. And um, this is when we look at leadership motivated to lead others, motivated to be an example, uh, motivated between right and wrong, okay? Last week, as I was putting um, the menu plan together, it was something that I and my family need. Y'all, I have done menu plans before. This is something that I knew that meet it needed. But I shared that the last time I did it is when we were going on an RV trip, Okay, and I put together a menu. I had a deadline. We were going to leave, right? And so that was a motivator. And it was a motivator because my family was going to be in an RV. This was a whole new experience and we needed a plan. That was my motivation, okay? This weekend, my motivation was you. Even though my family needed this menu plan and would benefit, all right, as a power-based intrinsic motivator, you motivate me. A lot of times, if it was just for myself or just for my family, it wouldn't get done because I'm a power-based motivator. Me knowing and understanding that helps me. I put myself into positions, okay, that force me to act. That's what a motivator is, a force of action, okay? Got a deadline, people are waiting for something, that is a motivator, that's a force to act, okay? So my deadline was, we were starting this on Monday, I wanted my people that are coming to the Fill My Cup retreat to have the, this recipe and this menu plan as a guide um, for coming, okay? I am not easily motivated extrinsically. Um, I'm much more motivated intrinsically, okay? I, I set things for myself and are more likely to do it than if somebody else sets it on me, okay? My mom could probably say that she can see that as a child of me growing up. Her telling me to do something for something probably wasn't gonna happen as much as me putting it on myself, okay? So we're all different. Find what motivates you. The third type of motivation that we're going to talk about is fear-based motivation. All right. Um, again, it can be extrinsic or intrinsic. And often it's like the power-based motivation or even the reward-based motivation. Um, we are actually seeing a lot of this type of motivation in our world today, especially in the media. Okay. Okay. How do we get someone to do something? We put the fear in them, okay? Um, here's the thing. Fear-based motivation is always going to be on the left side of our cup. Fear-based is always going to deplete us. It's going to overwhelm us. It's going to increase our cortisol levels, and it's going to stress us out. If you spend a lot of time worrying this is a type of fear-based motivation, okay? Mm -hmm. This will deplete and stress you out, and it usually only works for a short time. To continue to be motivated, we usually need a reward or power-based motivation to move forward. Now, after saying all that, what if I told you that fear-based motivation is the number one way most people are motivated to make a change? Okay, so you're going to see on this left side, I have the fear and then I have the word pain underneath it. Who here likes pain? Anybody like pain? Who here will do just about anything to not feel pain? I'm going to raise two hands. <laughs> okay, because I'm with you. So let's look at pain as a motivator. It is a fear-based motivator. But it's also what I said, the number one way that most people, remember at the beginning when I talked about um, an extrinsic type of thing, a fire. If there is a fire in your home, that is fear, right? That fire is scaring the heck out of you and you want to get out. 
okay? Your cortisol is going to go up. That's your stress hormone. It's supposed to go up if there's a fire. It's going to help you run out of the house. It's going to give you the ability to do that. I don't know if anybody here has ever had their house in a fire or anything. I have not. I've been blessed. But I'm going to guess that after that, you are feeling depleted and overwhelmed. <laughs> okay? Because it is fear-based. But is it a necessarily a bad thing? Because we want that motivation, right? We don't want to be like, oh, there's a fire. Hmm, let me think about this. Well, I mean, it's not that big. Maybe it's not that bad. Right? So fear as a motivator can work in our favor. In 2010, I was at my lowest spiritually, emotionally, and physically. I was in pain, okay? Um, it was a pain that actually motivated me to go to a naturopath. It was that pain that motivated me to follow her suggestions. Um, pain was the force. It was the motivator to disrupt my current habits, the actions that I was normally taken to get new results, the results that I actually desired, okay? I did the 40 day makers diet 40 days before my 40th birthday out of a fear based motivation. Here's the thing after those 40 days, my pain was gone. Y'all, I had the worst periods from 13 to 39. I can honestly say, like, I was walking down the hall and I were walking through my room and I was like, did I just pee in my pants or did I just start my period? Because I had absolutely no symptoms before that period. And I had always had headaches, cramping, all the things at least three days before my period. Okay. My pain was gone. Other pains were disappearing too. Here's the thing. No longer was that type of motivation going to sustain me on my health journey. If I was expecting pain to motivate me to continue to eat healthy food, then I was gonna to have to continue to have pain. But my pain was better because of the changes that I made. So no longer is pain a motivator. How many of you have had a motivator that no longer is motivating you? Okay. Sometimes the things that we change improve things enough that we're like, oh, I'm not motivated now. Okay. Pain is the number one motivator to start change. It is not the one that helps keep us going. So if you're trying to be motivated by an old, old motivator after you've already made changes, it's not going to work. Okay. That's when a lot of times people say, but I'm just not motivated. Okay. Y'all, I didn't want the pain back. <laughs> right but I wasn't motivated by it either. And it was just a few short months later that God gave me the exceptional formula, okay? Because I was praying. I was praying before I went to the naturopath, Lord, give me a solution. I went, I saw the biggest transformation ever. And then I'm like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do now. I was no longer motivated by, by this pain that I had because my pain was gone. Things were better, but things weren't all the way to what I wanted them to be, okay? So I guess you can call that a really big extrinsic motivator and power base because it was God, okay? He's extrinsic and he's pretty powerful. Um, and then he told me to share the exceptional formula with the world. And that later became my intrinsic power-based motivation, okay? So as I said, pain is often our number one motivator, but it's not going to sustain us. Is this making sense to everyone? Does anyone have any questions? At this point, feel free to ask. All right, last year I was, y'all, I was really working my feelings. I set my goal. This. The word I had last year might have been harder than the word I had several years before that, which was change. I had the word of the year change. And my daughter was like, why would you set a word like that? 
she hates change. She's like, never, ever. And I'm like, I don't like change either, which is why it's my word of the year, because I need to make some changes. Okay. So last year I knew that an area I needed to work on was feeling, feeling my feelings. So I had feel F E E L and fill F I L L, which is kind of how the fill my cup or retreat started last year, because I knew for me to actually take the time to feel what I was feeling, I was going to have to fill my cup. Okay. Um, I've spent years stuffing my emotions. Okay. And even now, after 10 years of emotional release, I still don't like feeling my emotions, y'all. It's often painful. Remember when we said we don't like pain? And as I said, pain can be a motivator. And so can staying away from being pain can be a motivator. All right. Um, and I'm not alone because I've done a lot of research on this and many women <laughs> don't want to feel under stuffers and men are even bigger stuffers. Okay. Um, women now have the number one disease, heart disease. It used to be a manly thing. And they would say probably because they stuffed their emotions. Us women, we're right up there with the men now, y'all. Okay. Um, cancer, like all the negative things that we don't want to have, all those diseases are related to us stuffing our emotions. Um, so a lot of us women go to food or sweets, something to dampen the pain, or in, in my case, it's exchange one feeling for a new feeling, right? I don't want to feel that, and I'm feeling that right now, so I'm going to go and have this so I can feel good. It's just an exchange, okay? This is still a fear-based motivator because I fear the feeling of pain, or should I say sadness or grief or any type of discomfort, okay? I'm afraid to be sad. That's a fear, okay? So what does it motivate me to do? I take action that leads me to my refrigerator or my kitchen cabinet or Andy's yogurt or custard or whatever, right? It takes me, I, I take an action to not feel. Now, last year, because like I said, I mean, this was a goal of mine. This was my word of the year, y'all. I put, I put the work in. I put the work in so much, like I said, by the end of the year, by month 11, I was like, hey, I deserve to do whatever I want, right? Um, we'll see you later, Monica. Love ya. So um, last year, I had this amazing experience during a time of meditation. I was allowing myself to feel the feels, okay? Instead of pushing it down, as soon as I'd feel it, I'd become aware of it. That's our first step, right? Awareness. And I'd be like, okay, I can do this. And I became sad. Now, I don't know why I was sad at that moment. I didn't know where that sadness was connected to. I knew it was sadness. And I allowed myself to sit in the sadness. And I rarely ever allow myself to sit in sadness. But I was allowing myself to sit in the sadness. And y'all, I wasn't timing it. But I'm going to say it was probably about two minutes. Okay. And, and it wasn't that I was like, oh, I'm at two minutes. Good job, Shawnee. You felt it. Now you're going to push it back down. Right. I was just allowing myself. And what happened was this amazing feeling of joy. Now, for those two minutes, there was a lot of discomfort of feeling that sadness. Okay. But y'all, that amazing feeling of joy. That joy is an emotion that I want to feel more of. It's something that I have worked on for years too. Like, I just want to be joy. The opposite of sadness is joy. And the truth of the matter is, y'all, if I'm not going to allow myself to feel sadness, I'm not allowing myself to feel joy either. Because here's the thing. I just go and replace it with something like food. And as much as I can say that food gives me pleasure, it does not bring me joy. There is a difference. And at that moment, and I was experiencing joy, 
I was like, this result is what I want. And the action I had to actually take was sitting in that sadness. It was enough of a motivator for me to continue my meditation practice and allow myself to feel, okay? I am gonna say that I did a good job doing that last year. I deserve some kind of reward. Sweets was probably not the best thing for me, <laughs> okay? So I love how God put speakers in my life just at the right time. So Dr. Caroline Leaf, she is my favorite neuroscientist. Yes, I'm a nerd. Yes, I have a favorite neuroscientist, okay? And whenever she comes up on any podcast or any um, speaker things, um, I listen. And I've been listening. Um, we're on day whatever. Today's day 18. Yesterday was day 17. I've been listening to this wisdom challenge for the whole month of January. So yesterday was day 17. Cannot tell you how excited I was that Caroline Leaf was on it. It actually motivated me to go for a walk because I was like, I can listen to that while I'm walking. And um, she was talking about wisdom, but what she shared, I've never heard her share. And I've listened to a lot of her things. Um, she's a Christian and she is a scientist. My two favorite things all wrapped into one. She could be my hero. Um, she shared with us the story about Jesus going into the garden of Gethsemane and feeling all the feelings. I don't know that I'd ever heard anybody talk about that. If you know the story, um, that's right before he was captured for um, later crucifixion, okay? Um, it was a painful time. It was suffering. His human nature even asked if his cup could be removed. And when she said that, you know, my ears, I'm like walking, my ears are perking, I'm like, cup? His cup was removed. Hadn't even thought about that really being in the scripture in that form. We hear about filling our cup up a lot in the scripture, but he was asking for his cup to be removed. And I was like, I was just asking people what they want out of their cup. That was y'all's challenge yesterday. Like, what do you want out of your cup? Right. And here Jesus was, and he was asking for his cup to be removed. Y'all, not even Jesus liked pain. Okay. We are not supposed to necessarily like pain. <laughs> a few things that we can learn that she talked about from Jesus in regards to pain is he was so distressed about the future that he said, the sorrow in my heart is so great that it almost crushed me. Who here has ever felt crushed by the sorrow in your heart? Here's the thing, y'all. Jesus didn't go to the candy store. He didn't go to the ice cream shop. He didn't go to the bar to relieve his sorrow. He asked Peter, James, and John to go with him to the garden. So when I was doing my research on motivation, y'all, did you know that what helps sustain motivation, not start it, right? Pain is the start. What helps sustain motivation more than anything is to belong to a tribe. Now we always think of Jesus gathering the 12 disciples so that he could disciple them. What if he also gathered them so that he could go through what his purpose on earth was for? Ever thought about that? I never did. Jesus knew that to get through this, he needed support. He probably kind of wanted them to go through it because he kind of got angry with the guys. Y'all are sleeping. Do you know what's going on here? <laughs> and they're like, no, we don't. How many times, even though you have a tribe or a family or around you, they can't feel what you're feeling, right? And you get angry with them. You don't understand what I'm going through right now. But they were there for him. They're like, we're here for you, right? But they, they're never going to be able to go through it for you. 
in the midst of his pain, and this is something that she talked about, he had to go through this pain, y'all. He had to. He asked that his cup of suffering be taken away from him. And then he went on to say, yet not what I want, but what you want. He wanted that pain and suffering to be taken away. He did not want to go through it. But he also knew that he needed to do what God wanted him to do. So yesterday I challenged you to write down what's in your cup. And believe me when I say that we all want to live our lives full of all the things on that right side instead of the left side. Okay. But we live here on earth and many of us must go through the process. And this was a word she said over and over the process of feeling those feelings to move on to the next step in our life. Y'all, a lot of times we think things happen to us instead of for us. Has anybody heard that before? God doesn't make mistakes. The things that happen are for us to become who we are created to be. I'm going to be honest. Like I said before, um, that pain that I had, I was able to do those 40 days, okay? But when the pain went away, the motivator had to change. The truth of the matter is, if I weighed my correct weight right here, right now, my ideal weight, I probably would not make healthy choices. What if the weight that I gained over the last six weeks was to teach me this lesson that I'm teaching y'all right here, right now? That instead of going to God, I was going to food. Caroline Leifner Talk said, so often we don't want to go through the process of feeling the feelings, so we never get to the next step. If you are not getting to the result, that you want. So I want you to go back to that belief circle I have here. Let me see if I can move this down or not. Okay. Before the action, we have feelings. If we don't feel these feelings, we're not going to have consistent action to get the result that we want. These motivators work towards this action but we got to feel the feelings to move forward. If you feel like you're not taking action towards the results you want, ask yourself, am I allowing myself to go through the process of feeling the feelings? And when I'm feeling those feelings, just like Jesus, am I going to God and saying, Lord, help me? And do I have my support team praying for me and holding me up? Or am I just keeping it all secret and hiding it, how I'm feeling, and going to food, sweets, or something else to stop the feelings? So interestingly, yesterday, I had my breakfast, and I felt good for hours, y'all. had my lunch at 1 p.m., and then I went for the walk around 2, listening to Caroline Leaf. Um, until about three. And then by 3.30, all I could think about was eating something. Not necessarily even sweet. I just wanted some food. I'm like, how can I be this hungry? Is it the salad? Is it 3.30? Is it the time? I mean, I'm asking myself these questions. Um, and I got up and I went and got myself some walnuts to fill that hunger. Walnuts are a healthy treat, right? It's not a sweet. I'm doing a sugar detox this week. I'm not doing a nut detox, okay? Um, but it's when I was eating those nuts that I realized what Caroline was saying was working inside of me. How often do I stop the hunger, the feelings with food, even healthy food, so that I don't have to feel? I was like, well, should I feel hungry? Y'all, Jesus, if we're gonna learn from Jesus, he was hungry. 
he spent 40 days in the garden then too, or the forest or wherever, right? And he felt hunger. That hunger did what? It forced him to go to who? To God. Because even Jesus would go to food instead of God if it was right there. So he knew he had to get to the point of hunger to really listen to God. So as I'm sitting there eating my walnuts, I was like, well, my hunger is going away, but I didn't go to God to fill that spot. I shouldn't have been hungry. Y'all, I ate at one o'clock. I was in at 1.30. It's two hours. I went five hours in the morning from eating without being hungry at all because I was staying busy, right? I wasn't thinking or feeling any feelings. I'm just doing my stuff. And then when I took time to sit, anybody just take time to sit and then you start feeling, oh, I feel hungry or I feel anxious or I'm feeling, feeling, right? And so I was like, walnuts aside, I did eat them all. I'm, I'm going to be a walnuts aside prayer, right? I said that um, I am an intrinsic, I have an intrinsic motivation more than external, okay? I do not ask for support very often. I was an independent child. I was an independent teenager. I was an independent young adult and I am still independent at 51. It's not always working in my best interest. I have people all the time, Rose is here, you know, is there anything I can do to help? Right? Um, it, it's hard. It's hard for me to, to do that because there's this intrinsic motivation and there's not a lot of external motivation to go on. Okay. My intrinsic reward based motivation is to stay away from pain. Okay. And, and the reward that I give myself to not feel that my action is to eat. And my result is typically weight gain. So if I back up and I go through this the opposite way, okay? And I want you all to think about this. I want you to think about what motivates you. What forces you? That's what motivation is. What forces you to act, okay? Because when we begin to understand what motivates us, we can use these type of motivators to help us reach our goals, the results we desire. So when I was looking up the different types of motivation, I learned the most effective, okay? So I've talked about sustaining as a tribe, right? The most effective long-term motivator is progress. When we can see progress we are making, we're more likely to be motivated to continue, okay? So often it is pain that motivate us, motiv motivates us for change. We're like, I want change. I'm tired of this pain. I'm going to do something different. It's our motivator. But to sustain that, typically we need a tribe. We need, we need support, okay? And then for it to be effective and long-term, we need to see progress. Now, I know that Rose and I know maybe a few others, I, I did this in my 20s, have been a part of something like Weight Watchers. Okay. And here's the thing. Most people have a pain that, they, that forces them to go to something like Weight Watchers, right? The pain could be like what mom said, I want to lose weight. That's my pain. That's her motivator, right? And then there's support there, right? That's why people continue to go. And what do you do when you first get there? They weigh you, they see your progress, okay? That is motivation. Now, for a lot of people, it will work for a certain period of time, but if they lose the pain, if that's what got them there, then they stop going. That's why they have a couple things to, to keep them going, right? So I want you to think about, again, what motivates you? What motivates you to continue, right? Um. This is why keeping track of something can be motivating. This is why I bought my new smart skill. It's this motivator for me so I can see my progress, even if it's small, even if it is 0.4 pounds, right? It can be a motivator. 
Uh, my biggest motivator, y'all, is is putting my age at 55. I am 51, and it's putting my my husband's age is 49. Y'all, I will beat my husband's age by the end of this year. That is my motivator. Okay, <laughs> y'all just heard me say it. What motivates you? Okay, music can be an extrinsic motivator. I just shared a couple of motivational songs. I feel good. So yesterday morning, Rose and I were talking. She was asking me about my diffuser, which is now off. I guess I've had it on too long this morning. And I was telling her that several years ago, I had put together, um, these say happy, but they are also my motivational, it's my motivational song list, y'all. This is my billboard. Not only is it the top 10 songs to help motivate me, it's also got my top 10 diffuser blends to motivate me, okay? So I have songs on here like Good Morning, Good Morning, Good Morning, okay? Um, I can't think of that actress lady that sang it, but it's a song that just comes to my mind a lot of mornings. It motivates me to get started in the morning. Good vibrations. I mean, the Beach Boys, y'all, can you beat that for motivation, right? The twist. I have a memory in my head of my father-in-law doing the twist that I will never, ever forget. That motivates me. You know what? I thought he was old at the time. He's probably my age when he was doing it. He wasn't old. Um, don't worry, be happy. Happy days. I feel good. That's one I shared this morning. And that's the diffuser blend I have in here. So my I feel good diffuser blend is three drops thieves, three drops purification. Walking on sunshine. Rockin' Robin. That one will motivate me. Tutti Fruity. And then happy. Okay. Sometimes we need an external motivator. Music can be that. If you're like, I have a goal this week of no sugar. That's my goal, right? When I'm feeling like I need a little motivation, instead of going to the other room, going to God, turning on some music, right? So I shared with you, I feel good and you raise me up. Y'all, I listened to the You Raise Me Up three times this morning. As you can tell, I must be pretty motivated because I'm talking pretty fast. Um, I started getting emotional. I started getting emotional. You know that I am working hard if I get emotional because I like to hide all of that, right? I like to stuff it. But after listening to that song three times, I got emotional. Yesterday, I shared spiritual, emotional, physical. When these three are all connected, we are whole, right? We are connected. I got emotional. I was getting connected. When you're in this space, you can say no to sugar. When you're here, you're like chaotic. I need something, anything to bring it in, right? False, fake, but it, it's doing it. Which is going to bring me to essential oils. I want to give you a way to connect an action that you want to be motivated to do with, it can be a song or I'm going to use an essential oil as an example. Um, this is called an anchor. If you've ever heard me talk about an anchor oil before. Sometimes y'all, we have to do things we don't want to do until it becomes a habit. Meaning even when we don't feel motivated to do it. If I waited to get motivated to not eat sugar, I'd still be where I was 10 plus years ago. But I was motivated to no longer have pain and to prove the naturopath wrong because I figured the pain would still be there even if I followed her directions. And I was wrong and she was right. It happens like 0.01% of the time, but here it was. All right. There are times we're going to have to do things that we don't feel motivated to do, but we can put some things into action. We can give us some force to do it, an extrinsic force like an essential oil. So um, I'm going to use exercise. For about seven years now, I have been putting peppermint essential oil in my little diffuser necklace every morning, okay? And... Even before that, before I got my diffuser necklace, I spent um, every morning smelling peppermint before I would go for a walk, okay? Whenever I got my very first peppermint, that just became a routine. Every time I smell it and go for a walk, it, it begins a brain connection, peppermint and walking, peppermint and walking, peppermint and walking, okay? My brain is like, oh, I smell peppermint. Do I need to go for a walk? 
Okay. It's 10 plus years later, but that's what my brain says. So I go here. Oh, I'm a little more motivated to go for a walk. I'd say 90% of the time when I smell peppermint, I am now motivated to go for a walk. There are times that not even my peppermint is going to motivate me. It's 15 degrees outside and no, I'm not motivated. Peppermint, you're going to need to do more. Okay. Um, but it's a place to start. My challenge for you today is to find something to anchor to a result you want this week. I asked you yesterday, what's a result that you want by the end of the week? My, the result that I want is no sugar. I'm going to have had no added sugar, white sugar, white flour type things. Okay. By Sunday, I'm going to have reached that goal. That is the result that I want. Okay. To anchor that, I could choose a song like I feel good, right? Because that's what I tend to go to, to feel good as sugar. So I'm going to give myself a song to feel good instead. I can also do an oil. I'm going to use motivation. Okay. Um, you can use a scripture. You can use an affirmation. You can use anything that you want to anchor to the result that you want. Any questions about that? So now I have some actions that I can take when maybe I feel maybe today at 3.30, maybe today at 3.30, I'm just already going to plan. I'm going to play the song. I feel good at 3.30 before maybe I have that desire to have some sugar. Okay. Maybe I'm going to put motivation in my diffuser at three o'clock. So I'm already smelling that before the 3.30 gets here. See how I can put some things in to help me stay motivated to reach my result. Now I'm going to give you all an extrinsic motivator. <laughs> I'm going to give you a challenge. I'm going to leave a post in the Facebook group today where you can share your anchor for the result that you want this week. And your name will go into a drawing for the smart scale. So if you had one for yesterday, you'll have two after today. Okay. Now we're getting close to the hour, but I want, I want to share for just a moment. And I'm going to see if I can pull this up. Some of you may be saying nothing motivates me, Shauna. Nothing. Sugar doesn't even motivate. I'm just not motivated. Let me just say that that can be true. Sometimes we're in such a stress state that that action, that motivation, that force can't happen. And I'm going to share with y'all for just a moment something I've been working on that the Lord has given me ah, and it disappeared. Oh, here it is. Okay. Let's see. I'm not sure how well y'all can see this. This was a, a last minute thing I decided to do. So um, I'm, I don't have it where I can show it bigger right now, but um, well, actually I might. Let's just push this button and see what happens. The Lord just gave me that. He was like, push the button, Shauna. I'm like, okay, I can push the button. All right. I want y'all to see um, up here, it says stress continuum, okay? We are all going through, there's stressors. Everybody has stressors. Can I just say that sugar and processed food is always going to stress your body out? Always. There's not ever going to be a time that your body's like, oh, thank you for the sugar. It is always going to stress your body out. And when I talk about sugar, I'm talking about the toxic sugar. I'm not talking about having an orange. <laughs> okay. Processed food was not created for our bodies. It was created in a, you know, manufacturing company to addict us to sugar and salt and all the other things that are toxic to our bodies. It is never going to be good for us. It's always going to stress our body out. 
when our body is stressed, it goes through this continuum and it can look different for different people, but I'm just going to go through it really quick. Um, we first go through the fight stage. Okay. I like to argue that's my fighting, right? Okay. Sometimes it's physical fighting. Sometimes it's, it's fighting with our mouths. If you find that you're fighting, whatever it is, your goal is, okay. You're in a stress state. If you um, want to run to the store to get some sugar, okay? If you want to run from the situation that you're in, you want to run from feeling the feelings that you're feeling, you are in a stressed state, okay? Um, if you feel overwhelmed, burnt out, or angry, we're continuing to go around, you're in a stressed state. And sometimes we are so stressed out that our body just freezes. Okay, so I'm going to see if I can go out of this for just a moment. To bring back up this picture here, it says stress, free state. Okay, this is when we are in this free state. It, best way to explain it, possums can visually see when they go in a stress state. They just play dead. Okay. What it looks for like for us as human beings instead of a possum is we become resistant. We resist whatever it is. Even though this is the result I want, we're fighting it. We're resisting it. Even to the cellular level. If you've heard anybody talk or me talk about insulin resistance, it's when our cells are resistant to insulin. There's a lot of different resistance. If your hunger, if your hunger hormones are not working correctly, it's because your cells are resistant to leptin and ghrelin. Typically, if your cells are resistant to all these things, you are spending some time in this freeze state. And when you're in a freeze state, you're resistant, you're rebell rebellious, you feel stuck, and nothing motivates you. You're like, I should be motivated. I don't feel good. I should be motivated not to eat sugar because I know it makes me not feel good, but I'm not motivated to do it. I just keep doing it. If you are in that state, bring it back up here for just a minute. You've got to work through what's called the five stages of healing, also known as the five stages of grief. The first stage we talk about is denial, right? The first thing we have to do is, is accept or become aware, should say awareness instead of acceptance, become aware that we're in that stress state and that changes are gonna have to happen to get out of that. And we're gonna have to feel the feelings, we're gonna have to go through the process. Um, and here's the thing, we're going to go to the next. So we're going backwards now from trauma. And there's, we could have all kinds of different traumas y'all that affect us. And if we have not gone through the process of those trauma processes, we're gonna be in this free state stuck. Our cell, our, at our cellular level, those emotions are stuck. And typically you're even gonna feel overwhelmed and you're going to be angry. That's anger is the next part of the process. So I'm sharing this because as y'all are working through maybe um, no sugar for the week, okay? I would say that in the last six weeks, my sugar became, was a, became a habit again, not necessarily an addiction. And I'm going to define the, defin the difference a little bit between that. When you have an addiction to something, typically you're going to have a physiological response if you remove that addiction. So 11 years ago, I didn't know I was addicted to sugar, but I got off of sugar 
And on day five, I was laying in my bed like a crazy lady. Okay. And I was having physical symptoms. I was shaky. Okay. I had a headache. I felt like crapola. I thought I should feel good because I haven't had any sugar or any bad foods, but I felt the opposite. It was because I had an addiction. Okay. I don't foresee that happening this week just because I haven't done that much sugar like I had done the 40 years before that. Okay. But I want to share that because we can be addicted to caffeine. We can be addicted to alcohol. We can be addicted to drugs. We can be addicted to lots of different things. If so, we're going to have a physiological response. If not, just a habit. When we are breaking a habit, we can feel stressed because the habit is what we know. So it is normal to feel angry. It's normal to feel like you want to fight somebody because you, you're making these changes because your body wants to resist it, okay? It's normal to want to run away from the situation or the feeling. And I want to challenge you when you're feeling that way to stop, to feel what it is you're feeling, give it a name. I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling angry. I'm feeling mad. I'm feeling grief. Whatever it is you're feeling, I want you to give it a name and I want you to give it to God. And then I want you to ask yourself, what can I do? What action can I take right here, right now? One action that I can take right here, right now to help me get to the next result that I'm wanting. All right, ladies. I think I stopped my share. That's what I got for you this morning. Any questions, any thoughts, anything? I can agree with um, the part that you said when we meet our goal and we're at our ideal weight, we have less motivation to stay there. And then, so it's this uh, vicious cycle because we met our weight goal and um, that motivator is not there anymore. So we relapse, we relapse, we relapse. So anyway. Yeah. And, and that's why it's important to find what it is that's going to help motivate us for that next step. Okay. So instead of saying, I, I'm guilty of this too, I'm sure. I'm just not motivated. Instead of saying that, it's taking that thought and going, okay, that motivation isn't working for me. I need a new motivator. Okay. And we have to figure out, am I an extrinsic motivator or intrinsic? Okay. To stay at this weight for the next year. Okay. Do I need a reward? Is there something that I'm going to give myself at the end or somebody else is going to give me, Hey honey, if I stay at this weight for a whole year, right? My ideal weight, what am I going to get? Right. Or is it intrinsic? Hey, this is what I'm going. This is my reward for, for doing this. Um, I think I shared, I shared it somewhere. I don't remember, but, um, I, I shared that this lady, Louisa, that I met, um, through one of the coaching programs I'm in, she is a weight loss coach now, um, and she weighed over 300 pounds and, um, she was in her sixties or I think she was right at 60 actually. Um, and from her twenties to her sixties, her doctor would say like, you've got to lose weight. She became diabetic by the time she was 60, she was either in a wheelchair outside of the home or a walker cane inside the home. And she said every year from her twenties to her till 60. So we're talking 40 years. She knew she needed to lose weight every year at the beginning of the year, she'd start to lose weight. She'd lose about 20 pounds. And by the end of the year, she would gain it plus more to so the, by the time she hit 60, she was over 300 pounds. And she said that, um, for her 60th birthday, her commitment to herself was this year I'm going to lose 20 pounds and I'm going to maintain it. She knew she could lose 20 pounds. She said, I had lost 20 pounds 40 times, right? Like she knew she could lose 20 pounds. What she hadn't done in the past was lose the 20 pounds and maintain it. 
So that first year she lost 20 pounds and she maintained it for a year. Year two, she lost 20 pounds and she maintained it. That was 40 pounds in two years. Three, she has lost over 140 pounds in seven years. Seven years sounds like a long time to lose the weight that she needed to lose. But for 40 years, she lost 20 pounds, which I, she said how much that is, but how much is that? 20 times 40. I should know that um, being a homeschool mom, but I'm out of practice. 800. She had lost 800 pounds in 40 years and gained it back. In seven years, she has not gained the weight back. She has continued to lose. But she had to change her motivator because if her motivator was this year, I'm going to lose all the weight. And she got to 20 pounds and she's like, I can't make, I can't sustain this. Right. So she just changed her mindset to, I'm going to lose my 20 pounds for the year and I'm going to maintain it. Maintenance is a lot easier because all you have to do is the same thing you've been doing, right? Losing 20 pounds, you have to change some habits. So she changed a new habit every year to lose another 20 pounds. So as you're thinking about things that are motivating you, think about what's worked in the past. If you've lost 20 pounds before, like Alicia, if you've reached your ideal weight before, what did you do to do that? And then what can you do to continue to stay motivated? Patty definitely can be motivated by both extrinsic and intrinsic, right? Um, and it, it's going to depend on the situation and it's going to change because here's the thing, what motivated me yesterday may not be what motivates me today. If what motivated me yesterday was because I had pain and today I don't have pain, it's probably not going to motivate me. Um, sometimes getting some blood work done can be a motivator or I just had a hair mineral analysis done and it gave me some information that motivated me. Again, the biggest motivator, y'all, my scale's telling me I'm 55 years old. That is my biggest motivator right now. It will say, my exact age or less before the end of the year. <laughs> so find what motivates you. Anybody else? Okay, mom. So exactly, it seems like we've talked about several different things that you want us to work on and to do. Exactly what was it that you're wanting us to put on the Yeah, I'll post, I'll post it, but you're going to find, you want to know what your result is for the week. Doesn't have to be the month or the year, just for the week, a result okay. that you want, okay? And you're going to choose something that can anchor to that as a motivator. So it can be a song, it can be an affirmation, it can be an essential oil, something that you're going to anchor to for that result. So my result is no sugar for the week. And I'm going to use my motivation essential oil and the song, I feel good. Okay. okay. But I'll put the post on there and, and tell you what, what you're looking for. Okay. Okay. So the goal this week is to figure out, you know, some things that motivate you. You said earlier, mom, that, you know, Losing weight is a motivator. It's been a motivator before. So what's going to happen as you go? Think about what are other things that can help motivate me? Do Am I motivated by rewards? Is it intrinsic or extrinsic rewards? Am I motivated by fear? Do I need someone to scare the heck out of me? Like, right? What is it that I need to motivate me to continue to get this result? All right. Well, really, I mean, losing weight is a big part of it, but I know health wise is probably saying losing weight, it I'll be healthier and feel better. So all there's, you know, like a whole list of things. Be able to do things that I enjoy doing, not 
you know, being able to walk further and not get tired or sore or whatever. So yeah, it's losing weight is there's a big Right. So write those down so that you have them to motivate you when just losing weight isn't working, because sometimes we can get on the scale and it hasn't changed, even though we seem to be working hard. So like you said, but your health markers may be improving, right? right. Maybe instead of losing subcutaneous fat, you're losing visceral fat, which may not be showing up on the scale. Right. But that's the fat we need to get rid of because it's the dangerous fat. So right. think about the things that will help keep you motivated even when maybe the scale isn't changing because it's not all about weight loss, it's about health. Okay. Well, thank you ladies for joining today. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you know anybody that could benefit from this, feel free to send them to um, the Facebook group. I know that Alicia sent somebody and going to get me her email address to make sure that she get, she's getting the emails and stuff, but um, I'll have it on there in the Facebook group too. All right. Tomorrow is a cup of inspiration and inspiration is different than motivation. And we're going to talk about that tomorrow. All right. Have a good day, ladies. Thank you. You're welcome. Love and appreciate you. Appreciate you.